come back with another video. And in today's video, we have a Dell laptop. This is a Dell Inspiron 15 3000 series. The exact model for this one is a 3511. And in this video, I'm going to take you on step by step how you can open it up and how you can repaste, clean up the heat sink and the fan and your motherboard inside out. And this is very important, and you should be doing your maintenance once at least every nine months, every year, to keep the health of the motherboard at its best peak performance. It's not always because of the CPU overheating or GPU overheating. It's true for the entire motherboard. Because the motherboard gets filled up with the dust, the fan gets clogged up, and the airflow over the board, it becomes less, and the components will get damaged. Just remember by replacing your thermal paste, you're not going to change anything in the system. Everything is going to be left the way you had it. I'm going to go over the items that I will be using and everything that I use will be linked in the video description in case you want to purchase yours. Just what you need to do is power up the laptop completely and flip it upside down. And tool number one is a good screwdriver set. I always hear people say in the comment, my screwdriver is not working, I damaged the screw heads, stuff like that. It's because you guys don't buy the proper screwdrivers. Give yourself the iFix screwdriver set. I purchased myself this basic tool set. Just get the basic tool set. If you get the pro tool set, they will include you with an opening tools, tweezers, and a few other stuff. But if not, just get at least the basic tool set. And for opening tools, I'll be using a metallic guitar pick. The metallic guitar picks are suitable for opening cases and covers. And also, you need a one sheet of the workshop towel. And people are like, can I use a microfiber towel? No, you can't. I would not recommend it. And the reason is for the next one. Uh, you need a 99% or 98% at least isopropolic or isopropolic alcohol. And the reason for the workshop towel is as soon as you put an alcohol on top of this one and you try to clean the motherboard, this towel will get ripped apart and will prevent the damage on the components. But if you use my microfiber towels, they do get strangled, tangled around the components and they can rip them apart. Next good one, next important one is a thermal paste. I'll be using Arctic MX4. You can use an MX6 if you want to, or you can go overboard, overkill with Thermal Grizzly. Also, if you want to be really fussy about it, if you want to go with a really good thermal paste that will last longer or something like that, that you guys keep saying, you can go with a Honeywell uh, PTM. But a uh, I would not recommend to spend that much money try to get the genuine one with the Thermal Grizzly. It's working fine for our clients, for myself, for everybody else, for at least two or three years with no problem. All right. But that's your preference. And after that, that's it. We're going to get it started. You can use a used or new toothbrush to clean the fan system, the uh, ventilation. On the bottom of the laptop, you're going to see a whole bunch of screws. We're going to remove all the screws except two screws. The screws on the back corners right here, you don't want to touch them yet. I'll explain in a minute. Remove the one in the mid, two sides, and three in the front. All right? And this, all the screws are the same size and height, so don't worry about mix matching them. Also, if you guys like my videos, if you find my videos helpful and helping you guys out, you can support the channel by clicking the like and subscribe. I'll greatly appreciate it. It helps and motivates me to make more videos, take requests, and answer your questions in the comment area. All right, the client said that they use a different type of screw here, so it is different, but it's the same threads, but the screw head is a little bigger, but yours should be all the same. And he put a super glue on this one, it's not coming out, so don't use super glue. Now, let's talk about this back screw. The reason that we don't remove it right away, because these screws have something called a C-lock. The C-lock will hold the screw from the other side that will prevent the screw coming out entirely. Also, it has its second purpose, is to separate the bottom cover from the palm rest. So as soon as you start rotating this, you're going to see a gap opening right away. Like that. And then you want to keep rotating until you hear tiny click sounds. And then you want to stop, otherwise you'll be here forever. Do the same thing on the other side. You're going to see that gap opening, and you want to stop after a few seconds. And now what you want to do, open the, put the guitar bit between the two or three millimeters in the cover and just twist it. And you want to hear a nice big click. You're not breaking anything. Those are the clips are getting loose enough. You want to do that in the front end, all the way to the corner, to the next corner. Remove your screw. This one has a super glue, so I'm not actually touching it anymore. But you need to remove all the screws. Once you do the front and the sides, all you need to do is to grab it from the corners and just lift it up and wiggle it around, and it will get released. 
And I can see they did put a epoxy type super glue type in here. Oh, yeah, don't do that. And right over here, we can see the one tiny heat pipe going over CPU and over GPU, and the fan system is right over here. We need to disconnect the battery. We don't need to remove it, just disconnect the battery. To disconnect the battery, you want to put your fingers on the side of these triggers, on the side of the jack. Don't pull on the battery cable. And then you want to pull it towards the battery evenly. Always bring this contact evenly. I hear so many people bring it sideways in and they bend the pins inside the connector. And when they try to put it in and they create a short a spark and game over. So don't do that. Always put it in straight, pull it out straight. Now you need a curved tweezers. The reason is because I, we're going to disconnect the fan connector for the laptop. We don't want to pull on these cables. And I can't reach my fingers in there like the way that we did for here to pull it back. I'm just going to put a tweezers on the side of this jack. And then I'm going to push it towards the fan so I can disconnect the fan cable without damaging the cable. Now, if you don't want to repaste, you just want to clean up the fan system, you can do that just by removing two screws on the fan. These screws are the same size and height. Then just lift up the fan, take it outside, and just clean it with a toothbrush. Use a soft toothbrush. Don't use a medium or anything. Use a soft toothbrush. Or just clean it, blow some air, and clean it out. Grab this heat pipe here and remove any cogged up hair or dust that you have in here. Just blow some air through here. And then you can just put it back in and plug in the battery. But if you want to go a step forward and repaste, you can do that by removing four screws on the CPU and three screws on the GPU. All the screws, again, they are the same size and height, so don't worry about mix matching them. Just remember, when you disconnect the battery, uh, when you try to power it on, it might take up to one minute for it to start booting up, showing the logo for the Dell. So don't panic, just wait, and it, make sure you connect the charger while you're waiting. And it will boot because there is no CMOS battery in here. The batch CMOS, the BIOS takes the charge from the internal battery. All right, once we remove the screws, you want to grab it close by the here. Don't grab it from the back here. You want to bend the tube and you don't want to do that. You want to grab it from here. You want to lift it up, work it around, and you will remove the heat sink. So there we go. We have the fan that blows through here and cleans up this heat sink. All right. You can see that there's a little bit too much heat, thermal paste in here. This is the factory. So what you want to do, you want to grab a little bit of the workshop towel, soak it in an alcohol. So what do you want to do here first? You want to swipe in a circular motion over here, grab this excess, use force. Don't worry, you're not going to damage anything. Don't be sissy about it. And same thing. In here, don't be scared. Just swipe, and you can see this one does get ripped apart. It comes to shreds, and will prevent the damage on the tiny capacitors around the CPU or GPU. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing here. You wanna do it in a circular motion. Remove the excess. Once we remove this ones. We're going to use a dry part. We're going to do second pass, dry pass on the components, on the heat sink. And now we're going to grab our thermal paste. We're going to put a one tiny line on the main die. And one dot on the secondary die. And the secondary die is called a PCH chip. The CPU chip is this one. And this is a PCS chip. In the different laptops, they move the PCS chip to a different location with a different heatsink, but in these models, they have it on the same uh, chip set. The VRAMs do not need cooling because they're not overclocked or anything like that. So once you have that one done, just bring it over, place it over, and make sure you cross the screw. This is screws. For the GPU, it doesn't matter how you size a triangle. For the CPU, you just want to cross the screw them. So that way the thermal paste will evenly spread over the CPU. So put one corner and then put the next corner on the other side.
But once you're done with that, you want to grab the fan. Before I put the fan in, I want to have plug in the connector. So it gives me a little more room to push it in. Then I'll just put the fan right on place and put the two screws for the fan. Remember, you do not need to put the bottom power on to power on and test it. So if anything, you can just double, come back and just make sure that you plug in everything. So before, I always say, before you put the back cover on, power it on and make sure that everything turns on okay before you screw it down. Put the connector for the battery inside the jack, right there. Now you can actually power it on. I don't know if this one has charge or not. Power on, it turns on and it turns off. So I don't know why, but maybe it doesn't have enough battery. Try again. Okay, this one stays on. I'm gonna tap on F2, make sure it goes to the BIOS. So I'm still not getting anything on the screen, so I'm gonna wait a few seconds, up to 30 seconds. So don't panic if you don't get a screen right away. Just wait, it did turn off again. Maybe it's the BIOS, so I'm gonna wait a few seconds. It might turn back again on. If not, I'm gonna plug in the charger. You see the light is off. So let's wait a few more seconds. If not, I'm gonna plug in the charger. Oh, I got a screen. Oh, it did turn off again. I'm gonna press F2. So I just wait, even if the light turns off, just wait after you press in. I don't know, it didn't shut down or no. But I'm gonna keep pressing F2. And there we go. We are in the BIOS and all good and dandy. Right, so once I get, make sure that everything is working fine, then now I can power it off close it down and safely put the bottom cover over and push the corners down the side, not the back corner, the back mid. Just make sure you do those nice clicks. And if you see any gap opening, just pinch them together and it will go to its place. And to finish it off, you just put the rest of the screws on and push the corner screws in and it will pull the cover to itself. Again, I hope you guys liked this video and help you guys out to do your own service and maintain it for Dell Inspiron 15 3000 series. If you have any questions or requests, feel free to leave them in the video comment. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.